Hi, Carpenter's Church. Hi. Hi. The Marcos. Hi. Welcome. Welcome to Carpenter's Church. Welcome. Hello, and welcome to our online service. At Carpenter's Church, we are all about loving Jesus and building lives. And as you can see, we are meeting in many different homes all over the place. I hope you've had a great week. Mine has been a little more exciting than usual. On Sunday, my slow pitch team won the championship. And then a couple days later on Tuesday, my touch football team also won the city championship. And then on the weekend, we took some of our youth to the Inspire Conference watch party over at Elam Church. And you are going to hear more about that in the coming weeks. We've been going through a series in the book of Acts lately. And today, a little bit later, Pastor John is going to talk about how the Holy Spirit helps us to share about Jesus. And we've had a, a verse, a theme verse over the, these last few weeks that continues. And it's found in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere and i want you to say that verse with me and and not to say it like super lame or, or quiet or like just like moving your mouth but not saying it but i want to hear it with energy and yes i want to hear it okay i might not be anywhere near your neighborhood but i want you to be so loud that i'm hearing it here in west mount okay acts chapter 1 verse 8 3 2 1 but you will receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere well if you're able to get up onto your feet, we are about to sing an upbeat song. So get into it, enjoy, have fun, have a great morning.
faith in your light that I heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night you tell me that your peace in the You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. I see many searching for. Why? But I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, 'cause you know just what we need before.
Father, we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you for your love, that nothing can separate us from your love. Nothing can separate us from you. That no amount of darkness or evil can overcome your light. But when we humble ourselves before you, you make yourself known to us and we can enter into relationship with you a growing relationship a relationship that is not stagnant that is not held back by anything but that we can fully pursue you each and every day and that you delight in revealing yourself to us as your precious children i thank you god that you are moving in our hearts i pray holy spirit that we would be open to your work in our lives this morning, but so much more than that is every day of this next week, that we would be open to your rule, to your love, to your power, to flood our lives and transform our hearts from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this morning we have an opportunity to give back to God. And if this is your first time tuning in with us, don't feel obligated to give. But if you call Carpenter's Church home and if you seek to follow in the steps of Jesus, then I want to remind you or teach you about a story that is recorded in Mark chapter 10. So there's Jesus and then there's James and John, two followers, and they come up to Jesus asking him for power, for authority, for recognition, for special treatment. And Jesus, he clearly explains to them that that's not the way things are. That Jesus has come to make a new way, a new covenant to bring his kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, to earth. And he responds that you know the rulers in this world lord it over their people and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone else. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. He uses his own life as an example for us to follow. That if anyone was worthy of being put first, of being served, it was Jesus. But even he didn't come demanding or expecting that. And how much more unworthy are we than Jesus to be put first and yet how often do we want to be the ones that are first but he says among you it would be different and that includes the every part of our lives as we seek to follow him among us it will be different that the way of Jesus is putting Jesus first the way of Jesus is putting others before ourselves and in that trusting God to take care of our needs in the way that he knows we need them to be taken care of now, that doesn't always mean uh, the same as how we see God needing to take care of our needs, but we trust, we grow in trusting that he knows better, that his ways are much higher than ours, his thoughts are much different than ours, but that he is trustworthy and he's a good father, that he will take care of us according to his will. And this includes serving others, this includes every area of our lives, including our giving. 
And so one way that we can put others before ourselves and serve Jesus this morning is by giving to Carpenter's Church. And if you feel Jesus leading you to do this, there are a few different ways you can give. You can give if you're tuning in Sunday morning at 11 on our online church platform. You can click the Give button in the chat box. You can go to carpenters.church for instructions on how to e-transfer, or you can drop cash or check in our mailbox at 1339 Avenue D North. And I pray that as you consider whether or not to give this morning, that you would listen to the Holy Spirit's voice leading you through his word and through your heart today. God bless you as you give. Good morning and welcome. I'm just so excited this morning just to continue in our series of messages of encounter, encounter. But before we get there, kids, I have just been so enjoying being able to do little things with you guys online. Last week, when we were actually in the church facility having church since last March, believe it or not, six plus months, six and a bit months, I guess, um, we were able and I was able to see all the kids that had come here and I was able to give a $10 bill away. And, uh, you know, that was kind of exciting. I was saying, who wants this? Who wants this? Who wants this? And finally... You know, somebody got out of their seat and made the effort to come and receive it. And that was our message last week, receiving the Holy Spirit. We have a part to play in that. Well, we've been speaking a number of different messages about this, and the kids have been participating all the way along. I've, I've received pictures of myself that look exactly like me, and uh, I just want to thank everybody, all the kids that have who have colored and drawn pictures of me and, and the pointy little part to my head here and stuff and never realized how pointy my head really actually is. But, you know, it, it's been fun. And you know what? Uh, today, again, we are going to do the alphabet game. And also, the first one to answer this question online, on our online platform, wins. And so the, the, here, here it is. There's something different about me today. What is it? Go. Okay, so we'll see who answers first on that one online. But good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, today we are going to continue in this series called Encounter. And after all, wouldn't you and I love to encounter the presence of God? You know, to have God right here, right now with me. Wouldn't that be an awesome thing? In all that I face in all that I deal with, in all that I go through in life, to have God present with me. His promise is that he will be with us. And in the book of Acts chapter 1 and 2, we've been looking at this promise of Holy Spirit, and we see it fulfilled on the day of Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit comes, and, and because Jesus' work is done, and he says, I'm going away, but I'm going to send the Comforter, the parakletos, the one who will come alongside and bring comfort to you. And we read in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, it says that we will receive power when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, when the Spirit comes upon us and we will be his witnesses. Be his witnesses. And that's what we want to talk about this morning. Receiving power to be witnesses for Jesus. You know, witnessing to others is, um, let's just say it's a little bit scary. It can be a little bit scary. You, you, you know, you might be the only person in your workplace, your classroom, your family who actually believes in Jesus. And you know what? Sometimes we're afraid to share our faith with other people, you know, we face maybe some ridicule, maybe a little bit of mockery. I, I know that when I was young and I was a young believer, um, I would work on, on the dredge with the guys in the tugboat. And you know what they, you know what they called me? They called me Friar Tuck. I thought that was kind of funny. But then they shortened it. And after a while, they just called me Tuck or Friar. Hey, Friar, throw me that line. Hey, Tuck. Get over here. Boss me around as the younger person on the crew, but and sometimes just mockery. 
Sometimes ostracized by our, you know, in our faith by other people. We're shunned. We're, we're kind of held away at distance. I remember going to this, this, um, this, this uh, uh, social occasion with some different friends. And we're there. And I'm engaging with different people. And, and then, you know what? The question came, you know, well, what do you do? Well, I'm a pastor at a church. Well, the person basically very subtly for the rest of the evening just kind of walked away and then stayed at the other end of the table all evening long. I thought that was kind of, but shunned because of something that we believe in. And sometimes we're put on the spot when it comes to sharing our faith and we're witnessing and, and we have this question of, why me? This morning, let's talk about witnessing. We're going to have a conversation here. But before we get into the conversation, let's do a little bit of a Bible study. So I want us to turn to the Gospel of John. Yes, we're going to be looking in the book of Acts. But I want to look at the the beginning chapter of John's Gospel, chapter 1. And he starts out with these words. He says, in the beginning, John 1.1, in the beginning... It says, you know, that's very familiar language to us. And John isn't using it by accident. And he's actually referring to creation. He's actually reflecting back to Genesis chapter one, where it says in the beginning, he's using that same language. And and so what's happening here is he's using this language to bring us back to this creation setting because he has purpose in it. Because he says this, in the beginning, the word already existed. The word already existed. What's the word? He's referring to Jesus. He says the word already existed. So at creation, Jesus existed and was very much part of creation. Because listen to what John says, the disciple. He says the word was with God. And this next statement blows us away and just absolutely tells of what John was convinced of to be true. The word was God. He equates Jesus with God. God in the flesh come down to dwell uh, uh, dwell among us. Emmanuel, God with us. And then in verse two says this, he existed in the beginning, repeating just to emphasize what he's trying to to really drive home for them. And then in verse 3, he says, everything is created through him, speaking of Jesus. And verse 4 says, he gave life to everything, again, talking about this Jesus. And verse 5 says, you know, he brought light into darkness, reflecting Genesis 1, where it says, let there be light. And it's not only the aspect of physical light that that John is talking about here. He's saying Jesus brought us from spiritual darkness into light, into the light of God. See, John is unfolding for us the awareness uh, and the awesomeness of who God is, the awe, the wonder, the creation of everything. Jesus is God. He was who he said he was. And then John says something which doesn't seemingly sort of make sense to us as we're reading in this. We go from verse 5 and, and then to verse 6. And then there's a contrast and it says this, God sent a man. So the wonders of God are being explained and John is unfolding this this awesomeness of who God is. And then he says, God sent a man. He was John the Baptist to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because he, because of his testimony. I, I, I just find that a little bit contrasting. This awesome God who's created everything and everything that exists has been created by him. He's all powerful, all mighty. 
sovereign, ruling over everything, and yet now he brings man into it. I find that strange. I don't really understand why. I I think I do, but not quite truly. But what I do know is this, is that God chose man. He didn't need man. He could have have done it some other way or means, but he chose man. And I, I just find that a little bit interesting because God is infinite and awesome and powerful, and man is finite. We're weak, we're frail, we're imperfect, we make lots of mistakes. I have lots of friends, they make lots of mistakes. Why did he use man? So that others would believe because of man's testimony. Because of their testimony. Human, sharing human experience, sharing the story and the perspective of the encounter with God that they have had, so that, and telling others about it, so that they may too encounter this God. Humans telling humans. I, I, I just think that's pretty ingenious. I think God knew what he was doing by using man. Pretty effective, purposeful, powerful. And God sends. It's one thing we need to understand. He chooses people. Humanity with all its imperfections, frailties, fears. That he would entrust this message of telling others about this awesome good news of Jesus Christ. Come to this world. John the Baptist, he's the one sent that is to tell the people. And in John 129, and I've quoted this before, it says, John, John the Baptist says, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You see, the way has been made open for us to be reunited with God through Jesus. The separation caused by sin has been answered and the solution has been provided. And Jesus hanging out with his disciples, he would have seen their weaknesses. He would would have known about their imperfections, their fears, and he knows their needs. So at the very end, before he's about to leave them, he promises that Holy Spirit will be with them to bring comfort and power for this witness, for testifying about He's equipping them for the task to share and to tell. Acts 1.4 says this, and it says the, the, the direction and, and the instruction, do not leave Jerusalem. You see, Jesus is sending them to a certain locale in a place. Do not leave Jerusalem. And then in verse 8, it says this. In chapter 1, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. And it's interesting here, this word receive, it actually has the connotations to take hold of, to grasp. So there's, we're to take hold of this power that is offered to us in this person of Holy Spirit who is with us and in us. Think about that. And in Acts chapter 2, we see this actually taking place on the day of Pentecost. The disciples are, are filled with the Spirit. And there's those that are, are mocking and ridiculing because they're not understanding what's happening. And then Peter steps forward with the 11 and he shouted to the crowd, the scripture says. 
You see, Peter, the disciple who had denied even knowing Jesus before, and the disciples who constantly missed and understood the words of what Jesus was trying to teach, and, that, and that in the end time when he really needed them, they fell asleep. You see, these ones stepped forward to tell about who this Jesus was. You see, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And there was a great manifestation that was taking place. There was a supernatural that was happening. And they step forward and they talk about Jesus, Messiah, God in the flesh, come down. And that they might be saved through him. And all through the book of Acts, we continue to see people being filled with the spirit of God and empowered to share the good news of Jesus. Power. Giving power to these believers to tell others. I want to include this morning by sharing some stories here. How many like stories? Right? How many love stories? And I have kids, are you still doing the alphabet game here? Because I'm going to be helping you up pretty quick here. But here's, here it is. In 1990... Um, I was on a missions trip to, Me to Mexico City. I was there with a bunch of other youth pastors, and we were going um, on this, this, this missions trip. And we were going to go check out the place before we brought some of our youth ministries down to do ministry. And um, we went to different churches, and we traveled around. And we traveled outside of Mexico City to this small village up in the mountains, now, it was hours and hours to get there because Mexico City, I don't know if you know that, in, in 1990, when I went there, there were 25 million people there, which at that time was the exact same population of Canada. So you think about 25 million people in one city. The city just never seemed to end. You would drive and drive and drive, and you're still in the city. And finally, we get out of the city, we go up into the mountains, and there's this little village and the village is in, in, in this little um, area. There's, there's dirt roads. It had been raining. Now it's starting to get muddy. It's dirty. And, and we go to this farmer's field where there's a tent set up. And it's dark because there's no electricity, very little light. And um, we go into this tent. And there's, there's lots of people in there. But they're mostly ladies and, and, and older ladies and moms and and girl, younger girls, and lots of kids and babies. And, and there's a few men in there, not a lot. And here we come in, you know. <laughs> we come in there and feeling so out of place. Dressed fairly nice. And we're standing in the corner. Um, I just wanted to crawl under a rock. Because uh, I just felt so so uncomfortable in regards to um, who I was and who they were. I wasn't fearful of them, but I just felt like, you know, what do I really have to offer these people? I started to feel that, and I was looking at their, their condition of humanity and where they were and in their poverty, and I'm standing there with a bunch of others, and our lead guy comes up to the front, and he says, uh, some introductions. And then he says, my friend, Pastor John Morris from Canada is going to come and bring the word tonight. I, this wasn't pre-planned. I didn't know I was going to get called on. And i thinking, why me at that moment? Why me? And so I go to the front and I'm standing there and I got my hands in my pockets. And I'm just very uncomfortable. And I'm sitting there with my hands in my pocket. And I'm, I'm, you know, playing with the coins in my pocket. And a few bills that I have. And it came to me. Value. Dollar. Value. But where's real value? And God just spoke to my heart and dropped within my heart of how valuable that these people are. How valuable that, that, that God would send me all the way from Canada 
And I shared that message. God, God values you so much that he sent me all the way from Canada to come here tonight to share with you how much Jesus loves you. He loves you so much that he died for you. You know what happened? My heart was stirred. And you know what? I, I was starting to get a little excited. And you know what? The Holy Spirit was giving me some power to share the witness of who this Jesus was. He was giving me boldness. He was giving me confidence. And after I, I gave a little bit of a call, every single one of those people in that room came to the front. We sang some songs. We wept. We cried. We prayed over. And it was just so awesome. And the presence of God filled that tent in that place. Pretty powerful when the Holy Spirit moves. And moves through us. I was on another mission trip in Romania. And I was in the city of Galatz, which is on the, the Danube River. It was fall. It was freezing cold. We were probably about 100 miles from the Black Sea. And I was sent by my church to go and come alongside this church in the city of Galatz. And to see what investment, dollars-wise, we had been giving to the church. They were in a building program. They were, they were also building other programs within the church to minister to different people groups and young moms and, and, and different things like that. So I was sent as a representative. And we were also involved in some of their ministries. And, and one of them was to go down and just go and serve, go and serve at the local university. It was cold outside and we went down there and uh, we were gonna serve by raking leaves in a, in a, in a square. And there was, it was a big square. There was a lot of us, but there was a big square and there was lots of leaves. And you know what? We had kind of figured out that we raked and filled probably about a hundred garbage bags fulls of leaves, big garbage bags. And after that, in the afternoon, we were supposed to go and just share a little bit with people as we would see them, invite them to a meeting that night that would take place. So I'm with my interpreter. I don't speak any of the language whatsoever. And I'm listening, and, and there's this young, well, there's this young man sitting on the bench. We go over and start talking to him, and I'm just listening to the conversation. And the interpreter's talking to him. And I started to realize that I was understanding what they were talking about. I don't speak Romanian. Hi, bye, thank you, noroch. That I, I probably butchered that. That's kind of like cheers, you know, salute. Um, don't know a word of it. And I was understanding what they were saying. I'm listening to them. And, and I, I go um, to the interpreter. I say, you know what? Tell him about this. And the interpreter turns around and he looks at me. And he kind of goes, oh, okay. So then he goes and talks to him for a while. And I go, yeah, yeah. And tell him about this. And the interpreter looks at me again, kind of a, puzzled look on his face and goes back in and starts talking to him some more, this young man. And then another time I said, you know what? Now tell him about this thing or whatever. And, and he looks at me again, goes back, has a conversation. At the end of the conversation, he gets his cell phone out. They exchange numbers with this guy and the young man leaves and the interpreter looks at me and he says, I thought you said that you don't know how to speak Romanian. I said, I don't. He said, how did you understand and how did you know to say what I should say or talk about when you did? I said, I don't know. I said, I could understand what you guys were talking about. I don't know why, I don't know how, but it was the power of the Holy Spirit. I, have to, I understand that now. God gave me understanding. He gave me, you know, I didn't know exactly what was being said, but I was getting the gist of it. And, and you know what? The interpreter said, you, you interrupted at just the right time. 
you prompted me to say exactly what needed to be said at that time. And he said, that is amazing. You know what? That was powerful. And you know what it did? It spoke into my heart and my life in regards to that. You know, God, you are so powerful. And you equip your people to say the right things at the right time as you send us to the right people, to share the the message, to witness and testify about who this Jesus is. And that is pretty powerful. Xerox. That's for the alphabet game. The final story is this one. I was at the Calgary airport and I was traveling back to Saskatoon on WestJet and I was sitting in the terminal. And I looked over and I viewed this Chinese lady with this little boy and she was tired. You could just tell she was tired. And she's kind of nodding off and uh, the little boy is just running around. And you know, sometimes if you're a parent, you kind of get this. You see kids and they're running around. You go, where's the parent anyways? You know, like they're not looking at, who's looking after this kid? Well, this kid was running all over the place and people were watching around. But I noticed that this mom was so tired and she was nodding off and she was just like, not even aware of what her son was doing. And I was kind of like, oh, well, that's interesting. And, and then my flight's called and I get up and I see this lady come over and she's now in the lineup for the same flight. And I'm thinking, boy, this is going to be an interesting flight with this kid. <laughs> and uh, so I get on the plane and I come to my seat and guess who my seat partners are? This lady and this little boy. I start to uh, get to know them a little bit, and Jenny and Tony, Jenny and Tony, that's not their real names, that's, that's, they've given themselves English names because we can't even pronounce their Chinese names, and the story is, is that she was coming from Beijing. They had left from Beijing, China, and were en route to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. They had never been there before, they don't have any people here that they know They had their luggage and they had a phone number. And when they got off the plane, they were going to phone a phone number and somebody would come and meet them. She was bringing Tony to Canada so that he would be immersed in English culture, English speaking culture, and that he'd be educated in this culture and that he would be immersed in it and that he would learn how to speak English properly. That was her goal as a mom. Think about that as a parent. I'm thinking, man, like this is unbelievable. I I would usually run off the plane because I didn't have any checked bags and I would run out to the curb. Charmaine would zoom in, pick me up. She slowed down a little bit, but pick me up and we'd just take off right away. (laughs) And I got to the curb and I opened the door and I said, Charmaine, I said, you you go park the car, You, you got... You got to come in and meet, meet this Jenny and Tony. You, 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 you won't believe their story. So Charmaine looks at me a little perplexed and says, okay. So she goes, parks the car, comes in, and then we sit down. We exchange information with them and, and say, you know what? Call us. We just would love to be able to help you in any way we can or whatever. And you know what? The next day she phoned. And so we know Charmaine actually drove Jenny around to, you know, get set up wherever she needed, the school, the, you know, like um, uh, in the city, you know, uh, just getting registered and all the different things that she needed to do, Uh, eventually got them into a home and and set them up in a house and helped them with furnishings. And you know what? It was just, and one day, Charmaine is driving Jenny around and they go past a church that we were in at that time. She says, what are all those cars doing there? And Charmaine says, well, those are people going to church. And she says, I'd like to go there. So she started coming to church. Jenny gave her life to Jesus. That is powerful. That's how the Holy Spirit 
moves. Powerfully and subtly, but just as powerful. He stirs the heart. And I'll tell you what, the motivation that we have because of what Jesus has done in our lives compels us to go and to share this witness and to be a testimony as to who Jesus is. Zebra. Again, that's for you kids this morning that are playing the game. So here's the thing. You don't need to go on a missions trip, but where's God sent you? Is it a hockey dressing room? Is it a hospital diagnosis clinic? Is it, a, is it a backyard fire pit? You know what? Is it the class you're in at school? Maybe it's the family that you are in. God is sending you. And he's equipped you with power. Take hold of the power that he offers to you by his Holy Spirit. And just share the message that Jesus saves. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. God, thank you for this morning. Thank you that, God, we can truly be your witnesses. And I know sometimes that's fearful and and that's, but God, you will enable us to overcome that. Look at the disciples and how they were transformed and, and became emboldened with power to share this message. How I was in that, that Mexi- Mexican village and, and, and was fearful and wondering, I'm so out of place, and how the Spirit of God came upon me. How I was in Romania and I was, I was able to understand a language that hadn't even, I hadn't even spoken or knew, known about, but I knew what was being said. The gist of the conversation. It's the power of your Spirit. Jenny and just making ourselves available and seeing you move in hearts and lives. God, you are drawing people and you've chosen to use us to share the message, the impact that you have had on our lives and sharing it with others. Help us in that, we pray, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen, amen. And amen. God bless. Next week, I just want to uh, let everyone know that in our home churches, we're going to be doing a communion. We're going to do a little bit of a communion service online. And so uh, just make sure that you are prepared with some, um, just some emblems that represent the broken body, crackers, the cup. Could be anything. A little juice, could be water, could be any, anything, any liquid, any... Um, Uh, little, they're emblems, they represent. So we're going to participate together and partake together and of the Lord's table in communion. So we invite you to do that next week. God bless, have a great week, and it was great being with you again this morning. Zebra, did I say that already? Zebra.